So today we're going to take a look at NRG versus Cloud9 because NRG, they were up 12-5. At this point in the game, it was 12-5 to NRG. And then they went on to lose nine rounds in a row to Cloud9 and lose 14-12 and miss the playoffs. So how did NRG manage to lose nine rounds in a row? Well, we're going to go through some of those rounds. We're actually going to start off earlier than the slide begins to happen. We're actually going to start round 15. This is their bonus round. This is a round that NRG are going to win despite having the worst guns here. And uh, in this round, we're just going to talk kind of big picture about what Cloud9 do. And you'll see that there's going to be some problems here, even though NRG do win the round. Uh, so... We start off with this close smoke here. We start with a Prowler NRG. They're going to get a little proactive to start the round, right? Uh, you know, they're going to send a second Prowler out here as well in, in just a second, and they're going to come and destroy uh, the Cypher trip that the Prowler catches just here. Rooney just backs off whilst that's going on. Cloud9, they're coming in towards B main, and uh, they come and take B main. And uh, eventually, they're just going to insert Vanity here into B main and, uh, you know, go from there. Now, we're going to see in just a second. Here you go, Oxy. You know, he's going to throw this nade, right? And I do have to question the kind of Cypher setup that FNS has gone for here because against the Rays, this is not the best Cypher setup because both these trips are just going to get destroyed by this nade. So not the best Cypher setup, but again, they do end up winning this round. Uh, so from this point, uh, Cloud9, they decide to come back towards A. As you can see just here, we do get a little bit of contact over towards B, but overcome Cloud9 over towards uh, A. They're going to send in this dog here. You see we've got the clove smoke in here as well to just create some more pressure over towards A. And they kind of push NRG off this kind of initial part of A and push them back. Now, NRG... You know, they don't react too much here, but you're going to see some of the problems that I think that they had later on uh, start to come out as well. Now, some just ulted into B main, right? So some has ulted here into B main. You can see him just here now kind of on top of the box, taking a look around. He doesn't see anyone, right? So actually we see NRG, you know, start to kind of come towards A. You see Victor starts to come towards A as well. They probably at this point expect them to maybe be, you know, chilling in towards Elbow or something uh, if you're NRG here. But instead, uh, they actually come walking up towards the top mid they destroy the camera in mid they put the smoke down and now we're gonna go for a full split right so we're gonna go for a split here coming from a coming all the way down here as well and this is i think gonna be the problem for nrg right the in this round cloud nine were able to take b main they were able to push you off a they were able to come all the way into mid and now they're gonna come and do this right and they're gonna own like all of this space at some point now okay you had an omen ult that kind of checked you for b main there but you know in theory they could be coming back to b main they could have just been chilling around this corner you know or or, or some didn't see them for whatever reason and they could be doing a b exec right we just don't have much info we don't have much space and we've just they were a little proactive at the start of the round but then since there hasn't really been anything and now we're letting them kind of you know just own the whole map and come for this big a split now, again, this is a round that NRG are going to win in a, a big retake here, a full 5v5 retake. They're going to manage to win it. But I do think that, you know, when you get to this point in the round that Cloud9 are coming down here and they get the spike down, really, like, percentage-wise, NRG's chances of winning this round on a bonus 5v5 retake and having lost as much space as they have, really, Cloud9 should be winning this round, right? This is a pretty good spot here for Cloud9. But NRG do manage to win it. 13 seconds left. Wow. Pushed out of it. Moose now left. tries to go for a second attempt. But no wall bangs coming in from the spawn. Planted the spike. It'll the be a five versus ready. five fight in a pulse plant now. What a drawn out round from C9. I don't think we've seen one this late throughout the entire series here. They're going to have to lock it in here for the retake. Paranoia is going to hit two really big bullets. It's actually going to concuss oh, no, Rooney no. and not give himself a chance here to get first. What, what a slide! Oh, double hit shot slide! And that allows here the rest of energy to move forward. Oxy now left alone. There's that first catching Ethan on a reload. But Ethan stays alive and wins it with the stinger. Okay, so NRG did manage to win that round, right? And you might say it's a nice retake and all of that. And good for them, right? We're now going to get to where they start losing, right? So it's 12-5. They just need one round to win this game, but they're not going to manage it. So what started going wrong? Well, as I said, the kind of signs were already there, I think, in that previous round. But let's take a look at this one as well, because you're going to see in this one, Cloud9, they start with a default coming in towards B main. Uh, we're going to go one for one, right? Good trade by Oxy there. We go one for one. Now, they do still have smokes because they're playing the clove. So here we go. 4v4, what are we going to do? And again, this is where I think we, we run into some problems. Right, that again, just take a look at the map uh, as what NRG are going to do here. And again, Cloud9, they're just going to come back towards A, as you can see. But we're just going to end up in this stance of like, 
really no idea, you know, wherever they go here, you know, if Cloud9 decides to hit either site here, you know, we're just in a straight 4v2, right? We're in a straight 4v2 with a result, and we've just popped Seekers as well, right? So we're just we're just not in a good spot here for energy, and you could even argue, like, this setup here against a result, you know, isn't probably what you want. Now, you'll see as this goes forward that, you know, the result doesn't end up, end up hitting them in here uh, in a second, but... You know, we because we've ended up in this setup, we don't really know what's going on. Ethan's now going to get, uh, you know, kind of trapped here, essentially, and he ends up dying to the nade just here, uh, you know, with no real way to get out. And now we're just in a bad spot, right? And again, there's no, like, help coming out from elsewhere. You know, we don't have, like, a proactive plan to come and take any space at any point, and so we've just kind of been left guessing, essentially, and it doesn't go well. Meanwhile, the crash, he's just made it inside the site. There's that push forward, a three-player swing, this time towards the generator. Back and forth we go, but it's up to Finesse alone. A chance here for C9 to stay alive. Spike planted. Plant now down, ult available for Rooney too. So he'll play the contact, exactly he'll jiggle to find the information. Neural Theft also being thrown to ping out Finesse inside the back of this A site. You're just gonna wait it out. First contact will be Rooney no matter what. Finesse walks forward and Rooney. So NRG was struggling perhaps with a bit of lack of mid-round proactivity, I would say, early on of when they started to go a bit wrong. So we then started to see a couple rounds like this, right, where in this one you could see the pings already here. They're kind of ready to almost, you know, do this off the rip. They're ready to kind of, you know, surprise. And as soon as there's contact, they're going to, you know, go for this stun play and whatnot. But again, you'll see there's a bit of hesitancy. And there's also this, that Cloud9, I think, realized that NRG... Maybe they just hadn't dealt with a team doing this before, but like pushing deep mid. Some I'm pretty sure has closed the door here for NRG. Uh, but now take a look at them, right? They're fully coming up here. And because NRG are like focused on, you know, trying to punish A, any any aggression towards A here, what happens is you're going to see that it looks like they have almost a bit of a la lack of protocol here of when this camera gets destroyed. What exactly should they be doing in this round? Because you're going to see that these guys just hold on, right? These guys have seen a close smoke and Rooney has been shooting a little bit, so they, they know that someone is kind of out here towards A. But now that this camera's been destroyed, and now that these guys, you know, could, in theory, walk up here, so something's got to change, right? And you're just going to see from this point on, it, it, it it's a little too slow, right? I mean, you look at where FNS is now. I mean, in theory, these guys at this point, from if they just kept walking after they destroyed that camera, which is unlikely, but, you know, a, a possibility, you know, they they probably are getting to, like, this point already, right? So the, th these guys should have a time in their head of, like, okay, these guys don't have our back, right? Like, this time is getting on. We send out a Prowler here. You know, someone shoots it. Okay, we're going to send out a second Prowler here in just a second from Crashies as well, right? So he sends out a second Prowler here. Someone shoots it. Okay, okay, there's still someone there. We know that. 100%. They, someone still could be walking, you know, anywhere here. In theory, at this point, someone probably could be about here, and this could be a free kill, but we haven't reacted at all. Like, you know, there has to be something that we're, we're doing here, and eventually what you're going to see is a dog comes out. We, we still haven't really, really done anything, right? Crashies then, you know, throws this fade haunt, and by this point, you know, eventually Tom and FNS, they're finally, you know, kind of re-exploring this, seeing that there's a smoke down, but now take a look at what happens again, where... This time, Cloud9 do take this timing to come this way. But again, these guys seemingly just don't have the reaction or the knowledge that this is a real possibility. And as I said, by this point in the round, if someone had gone off the first timing, you know, they could be they could be knifing Ethan at this point, right? But there just doesn't seem to be that kind of awareness of what's going on. These guys are kind of later focused in on these guys, but also refusing to go, right? Like, you need to be probably doing something here <laughs> if you're an rg right you know this guy needs to just send it at some point and you guys send it and you try and take this fight and then you know he he kind of worries about what potentially could be going on in the back lines right but you're going to see that they do eventually go for it they don't really get anything from it and then we kind of end up really surprised when we're in here i don't know how long these smokes last a dangerous one for sure especially with the spike moving up towards the pawn shot oh, pincer maneuver on both sides and that's oxy opening it up let's go Okay. And then by this point, you know, once we're getting to like 12-9, I think this is where the pressure starts to build, right? We've lost four in a row. It's now actually getting pretty close. What do we do? And so in this round, like NRG, they fully commit to going for, okay, we've perhaps been a little too passive. You know, this mid thing is causing us some problems. So they're going to 
full aggro mid here, as you're going to see in just a second. But I think that Cloud9 and Vanity had a really good read on this game. I mean, you see, even see from this point in the round, like, they're expecting proactivity at this point, right? Like, we've just come around you, we've flanked you, we've, you know, just outthought you, essentially. Like, we're expecting that you're going to do something at this point, and we're going to play grouped up, waiting for that, essentially. And that does happen, but NRG actually just wait, give it a bit of time here as the smoke comes in, and they send a flash out here as well. You know, now NRG, they group up to go for this kind of big uh, kind of crunch play, essentially. But Cloud9, they have a very good read just coming in here towards B. And there's nothing wrong with what, you know, NRG do here just from the map. You know, it looks quite good, actually, right? The Haunt, the Flash, you know, everyone's kind of running out together. You know, we're, we're expecting it. We're ready for it. The problem is they use so much util. You know, they're also using some a Breach Flash and a Stun and whatnot. No one's there, right, as we can tell. But they do run back towards B and they get the right read, right? And Cratchy's is pushing out A, so they have the right read. The only problem is, and the big problem in this round for them, is that Oxy is going to pop his Razult. Uh, you know, he's just popped it just there. So that means that essentially, you know, ideally in this scenario, they're maybe just ahead of the timing. Maybe they could just get here back onto site. They have used a lot of util here, so, you know, they are lacking some as well. But they just aren't quite able to get back onto the site enough for Oxy popping this Razor and Cloud9 taking the site. It's gonna force the pivot now. C9 to Tempo up towards this B site. Showstopper pushing some away down to 41 HP. And there's the overdrive towards the back of the site. But it's a two for for Cloud9. The advantage coming through. And no opportunities for energy to flip back inside the site. Ethan now getting caught towards the back by the dog. And he's now pinned. Met up with Crashies, who runs by Spike and gets the headshot of the vanity. And somehow it's a two versus two. Spike is down. Yeah, Crashies. Another one to Rooney forces the res, boost gets the pick! And Crashies once again is trying to get another momentum clutch for energy to close out the series if he can. Camera pins him, he doesn't care to remove the dart. Nah, use it. Hot now out the swing out from Cloud9. And you see there maybe a little bit of like, we're just chasing it a bit, right? Like Crashies using a fade ult in a 2v4, and even though he kind of makes the round a bit close, you know, probably not the best use of a fade ult when, you know, you've got a couple rounds left where, you know, you can still salvage it and maybe use that ult, you know, later on uh, in the half. But we eventually got to this, 12-11, round 24. And this was the round that really, you know, they were very close to winning here in RG. But again, I have to say, really good call from Vanity. I think he had a very, very good read on, on you know, what NRG, what they were likely to react to and how they were going to react to it, right? So this time we get the trips uh, you know, on both sides of, of mid here, right? And we're playing kind of fully passive B. And it's funny, I was watching this game, you know, with Sideshow when we were streaming it. And at one point, FNS was, you know, sitting in this corner here, like by where his camera is just here. And I said, like, and he was like on his camera that was in mid. And I was like, oh, that could be a bit dangerous if they, you know, kind of contact out B. And Sideshow was like, oh, no one's ever going to just contact out B there on you. You know, the, the, who who's just going to contact out B? Well, in this round, again, Vanity, what a great read you know, just kind of feels like, ah, oh, this is a bit empty, you know, nothing's here. So they do just contact out B and they're already on the site. And by the time the FNS, you know, flicks this camera again, you can kind of see it in some direction. You know, he's like, whoa, 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 they're already out, you know, like they're already out on B. Really nice call here from Cloud9 and, you know, getting this right read of what was going on here for NRG. But now from this point, they get so close to winning this one. So, so close to winning it but it wasn't to be. It's not planet the staircase, it's planet safe. Maybe now for C9 to have to fight inside the site. First blood then comes in for Finesse, who throws out that hat. Seekers then coming out as well for C9, as they're battling towards the back of the B site. That's a one for one, big flash coming through, and Finesse somehow gets the kill while full blinded. There's a hat thrown once again, we have a rolling thunder out of the defensive side. Disadvantage in terms of C9, in terms of the numbers, left alive. But all these folks coming through again, it's not really planted for them. Finesse gets another pick. Only two left alive here at Cloud9. And they're just spraying across his smoke. Finally, Victor commits onto the defuse. The double swing inside. A triple kill. And Vanity pushes us to overtime. Yeah, that's a tough way to lose. And they really do need to fix this map. Uh, but let, let's talk about this retake then. Because I do think... <laughs> There are maybe some choices here from NRG that, you know, you could argue maybe aren't the best. You know, it maybe even starts with this because you do have a breach ult that we do see come in later on. Uh, so, you know, you might think like, oh, we can actually play for a more full set retake here and we don't need to be, you know, maybe taking risks like Sam is here. But they actually, okay, we find the first kill. You know, we get the Cypher ult online as well. 
And so, you know, we know that, okay, there's, you know, no flank and whatever. There's kills going back and forth on the site. And this is where the timing is maybe a little unfortunate for them because they're just going to get pinged like now, right? So you can see location revealed just now. And on the map right now, you know, Cloud9, it ends up, you know, two players here. And then these guys are pretty spread out here, right? So Ethan thinks, okay, I'm going to ult these two here, right? The two that are kind of the problem on the site. Maybe FNS is dead here. I don't know. But FNS actually ends up getting that kill. And so this breach ult comes in. It's actually going to only ult actually one guy and FNS, right? So the the timing is maybe a little bit almost unfortunate for them there that they don't really find great value. Because obviously at this point, if you could have a breach ult still at this point, you win no matter what. But they do make a mistake here as well, right? In terms of playing against this Sunset B main stuff. I, I, in fact, they make a couple of mistakes, right? One is that Victor is the guy who's going to be on the spike, right? FNS actually finds another kill. We're in a, a 2v4. The first mistake they make is that Victor is the one who's going to, you know, be on the spike. The reason that that's a mistake is what you're going to see next. And actually, Victor still has a slide as well, by the way. So keep that in mind for what you're about to see. Because what happens next is what you need here is you need to break their crosshairs, right? And the and the timing of this, you know, so Victor gets on it now, right? They're going to start kind of spamming now. You need someone to be jumping around, hopping with a classic. And ideally, that would be your Neon, right? Ideally, this would be Victor jumping out here, probably sliding out, you know, and just breaking crosshairs and making it so that, you, you know, you can't shoot both towards the spike and here, right? But you'll see that what they end up doing here in RG is they just kind of end up you know, just, just kind of standing in the way, essentially. O almost like, you know, I know they're trying to kill him and whatever, body blocking, but they, you know, they did need someone there to just kind of be hopping out and not trying to, like, fight them. You know, someone had to be the kind of designated, I'm just going to run around thing, which ideally would be Victor. So a little mistake there, but it did cost them dearly. And then finally, we come to the last round, round number 26. Obviously, NRG have lost eight in a row at this point. And this round was just, again, uh, the read that Vanity had. I mean, it's just pure disrespect. I mean, it really is pure disrespect because this time they go like quickly, as you can see here, towards the top of mid. And this time there's a trip here, right? There isn't the camera here. There's just a trip here. But this, I mean, is just crazy. You almost would never see this. They're going to break the trip and they're just going to run through their own smoke into a crossfire here. That is not something that you often see, but it shows just, I think, the read that Cloud9 and the confidence that they were playing in their calls and whatnot, that they kind of knew, like, oh, if you're putting a trip here, like, you're going to be heavy on the sites. And again, you'll see that, you know, I mean, this is not something that you often see, that we are just running through that, essentially. And yeah, okay, we end up going one for one there, but now again, you end up in a, in a big problem. Right, again, it just seemed like NRG, they didn't really know how to deal with this, right? Eventually, Crashies is going to come pushing here, but FNS kind of ends up trapped in this spot. Some is looking back here. Ethan has to look back here. Like, they they didn't know what to do, right? Because at this point, you have probably a couple options. You kind of have to just pick a side, right? Whenever you're getting pinched like this, you know, on, on either side, it could be essentially, right? You kind of just have to pick a side, I think, as groups here and say, okay, we're either going to push this side or we're going to push the threat, right? Maybe in this instance, you'd want to maybe, you know, all four of you come back here and just kind of re-pinch on these guys in mid. But you'll see the NRG, they just kind of end up stuck, <laughs> essentially. You know, they all kind of go off one by one, kind of defending the different lanes. Uh, and it doesn't work for them that well. You see, like, okay, Crashies is fully pushed out. Hey, that's good. But now Ethan is kind of left on an island. And in theory, you know, someone could even come this way on him. So it's, you know, not going to be easy for him. And any rotate that he has to do is going to be, you know, he has to come this way now, essentially. You know, whilst on B here, you know, we're kind of stuck. One guy facing one way, one guy facing the other way. You know, Moose actually sneaks in here through Marker as well. This trip allows him to give him a little bit of space, which actually gets him a kill because this trip is not quite on the, on the edge here either. So they just seem to not really know how to react to someone pushing top mid against them very aggressively like cloud nine had done multiple times and as you'll see now it's gonna cost them the game stand for both finesse and psalm towards the b as the others are rotating trying to find flanks everybody is isolated there's that first lineup but it's a one for one b sight up for grabs for c9 and this may be the final I'm moments final of energy be a beautiful comeback here for c9 remember they're strewn about the map energy's gonna have such a hard time trying to clear all these angles first shot from oxy the rooney is low here 
If Ethan and Crashies hit these shots, they're right in the spike. And Crashies hit the trip. They know he's coming B-Main. He's all alone once again in another clutch attempt. Trip now broken. Camera is up. The first no, wall bang on to Rooney. Tap on to the spike. Last two players of Cloud9 back towards the market. Goes for that second time. Come on, as come the on, satchel please. comes up. The death split coming through. Not enough time.